Jeans tonight. Got my scissors. Got Minerva. Got my fabric all cut out. I haven't made a pair of jeans in a while. So, might be a little slow going here. Got my machine all set up, tested it out. Seems to be working. And this is a, I put in the description, I put a 1910 sewing machine. It's clear, near as I can tell, this machine was made somewhere between 1910, 1905 and 1910. So, at least 110 years old, a little more. It's an old machine, still works, it's a treadle style. I got the big old crazy foot pedal down here. My lighting is not very good on the foot pedal. But that's the way we do it. No electricity necessary, except for the whole streaming part. That, you know, apparently is a thing of some kind of thing. So that's what we're doing. I actually cut these out like a long time ago. So I gotta orient myself here, see what we've got going down in Groove Town. I will not be finishing this pair of jeans tonight. Typically, from start to finish, cutting everything out to finishing a pair of jeans is around a 12 hour project. I'm not gonna stream, so I, I, cutting them out is probably two hours. I'm not gonna stream for 10 hours. So we're just gonna do a bit here and see where it leads us. Looks to be a waistband. That's the, one of the last things we do. We're not gonna be doing that tonight. Waistband is pretty much the hardest part of a pair of jeans. Let's see, we probably won't get to that. That, we we'll probably will do the back pockets. Let's set those over on the dude pile. This is where we're gonna start, right here. Put in the back, that's gonna be the coin pocket. Probably just gonna do the back side tonight. That's my guess, we'll see, we'll see where things lead with that. Those and these, and let's see what else we got here. And that's the front. So we should need that. <clears throat> and here's the back. Okay. And typically, I use about one and three quarter yards of fabric. I usually buy two, so I got a little extra. And one of my big things is I always forget which direction these guys go on. So I gotta compare it to an existing pair of jeans. <clears throat> hey, Ray! Thanks for stopping in. Good to see you, as always. I wasn't sure if anyone would be interested in watching me sew a pair of jeans on a ancient sewing machine. I didn't know what to expect on this one, but it's great to see you there. So thanks for coming in. Kind of a, a weird setup. I, I, I hope that the audio is coming through reasonably well. Kind of an odd, well, I got my microphone right up here and the camera's in kind of weird places. And so we shall see. That looks right with that. <clears throat> and I have to, I have to actually have to, move forward with a bit of caution. I do try to have a kid-friendly stream, generally speaking. And as my mother has pointed out, if you want to learn how to cuss, learn how to sew. Because you will end up cussing when you sew. That's a fact. So I'm going to have to curtail that on this fine evening. Which shouldn't be too much of a problem. I've always got my mute buttons if necessary. So that one's gonna go on that side, that one's gonna go on that side. And that's that one, okay, I feel like this is making some kind of sense. <clears throat> Good, I'm glad you can hear me well, that's excellent. Is the music coming through? I'm playing Seventh Sanctum in the background. I chose Seventh Sanctum because I will probably never play that one live because I'd have to re-record all the rhythm guitars for it. Those all got lost during one of my backups. Okay, so that should go there. Cool. That's making sense. All right, I'll go over there. Boom, boom. A little of this, a little of that. 
Mm-mm-mm. Okay, where's my pins at? Boom. Cool, you can hear the music. That's great. Glad to hear it. I'm glad that I have figured something out about streaming over the past year. Actually got some of this stuff right. Okay, so these guys together. Hey, in fact, Renee, if you uh, are if you got a free hand, text grandma. And let her know that I'm doing a sewing stream. She'd love to watch. I meant to text her before I started, but, you know, I'm an airhead. So, there's all of that. She would love this. All right. Pin some denim. Down, down, down. Cool. Okay. We got pins. We got denim. We got heavy metal in the background. Life is good. I have, I don't think I've bought a pair of jeans in probably 13, 12, 13 years now. That's probably about how long I've been making my own jeans. Cool. Yeah, thanks. All right. And funny thing, in all that time, all the pairs of jeans I've made, the shirts I've made, all the other stuff that I've made, I have never owned a pin cushion. A lot of people uh, particularly with these older machines, they got this thin arm, they'll take a kind of section of uh, elastic or some kind of stretchy fabric around here to put their pins in, which is a great idea, but I really like my Minerva, and so I don't want to mess her up. This is a Minnesota Model A, and her name is Minerva. And it's not just a Harry Potter reference, it's also because, you know, Minnesota, you, got, you, you, you know what I'm saying. You got me here. You you know what I'm talking about. You crazy kids these days and your rock and roll music. All right. So now if I set this machine up correctly, like I thought I did, this seems gonna work. And the tough part is when you think you set everything up right and your scene doesn't work, and that's when you have to get this thing out and then mute because you're about to start cussing. Seam ripping sucks. <laughs> and if you're gonna sew, you're gonna take some of your seams back out. It's gonna happen, 100% guaranteed. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, get out here. So it's been a little while, I'm gonna move this pin a little bit. Make that a little easier. Cool. I'm trying to kind of remember how I did my seam allowances on these. Fortunately, this is a pair of jeans I also made, so I can just kind of take a look at it. Okay, yeah, okay. In good shape here. Cool. I can do this. Make that'll work. going here. Yeah, if the electricity ever goes out on Sarah and I, we're like, whatever, no problem. Hey, Gira, thanks for stopping in. How you doing? Nice to see you. Hope you are enjoying the show. This kind of thing would appeal to to Miss Gira. She's she's a DIY kind of a person, for sure. I didn't think anyone was gonna watch this. This is great. <laughs> I like it. One seam down. Boom. Oh, actually, move this thread properly, so to speak. Two weeks left till baby number three. That's great. 
I do not have two weeks left till baby number three because I can't make babies. And I like that. But, congratulations on baby number three. Hopefully everything is coming along well and healthy for mom and baby and little brother, little or big brother, big sister, you already have. Cool. Okay, now I should actually turn on my iron. I'm gonna have to use this as well. <clears throat> All right. Let that heat up and I'll do the other one. Things end up all over the place when you're, when you're sewing. All over the place. I'm a pretty organized, tidy kind of person, but yeah, this stuff ends up all over the place. All right, that. Throw so this up here, because that's where it's gonna be needed next. Iron board. All right. Kids are excited. I bet, I bet they are, yeah. They, they, they usually get that way. We have a fairly new nephew, and he has a seven year old sister. And so, when the baby was about to be born, she asked, you know, how did the baby actually get out of mom? And when she learned where a baby's come out of a mom, she was a little freaked out. <laughs> you know, at some point you gotta learn how life works. It ain't all storks. <laughs> I know some people who, I'm like, I'm okay at sewing. I can get stuff done, I'm decent, but I know some people who are just like amazing at it and they wouldn't have to use like nearly as many pins as me. Like my friend Susan, when she's sewing like uh, see, uh, hems, she doesn't even sew at all. Oh, there's mom. Renee's grandma is in the chat room. I did invent music, that's true. Yes, there was no music before the Mad Poets. Bach, those are all Mad Poet cover tunes. Yeah, Judas Priest, I wrote all that. Absolutely. Credence, yeah, Elvis, that was all me, all me. Robert Johnson, yeah, that was me in a past life, you bet. Even though I don't believe in past lives. <clears throat> all right. So this particular older sewing machine is a vibrating shuttle sewing machine and that means it can do a straight stitch straight stitch down the uh, the vibrating shuttle style which is basically had a very different bobbin so so this is the actual bobbin that we use and the, the vibrating shuttle mechanism it's uh, it's not possible to do anything other than a straight stitch, so that's all you get. You can't do a zigzag, none of that. So it's very, I mean, really, I mean, the majority of sewing is done with a straight stitch, so that's still. Try to hop back on later. Can't wait to see. Yeah, the, you will not be seeing the finished product tonight. I don't know if you were on when I first got on, but you know, typically about 12 hours to make a pair of jeans. 
Um, it, sometimes a little more. This would probably be a little slower because I'm sitting yakking with you guys, but definitely not something I'm gonna finish in a single stream. I'm, I'm kind of hoping just to get the, the, the back side done. We'll see if I get to the pockets. <laughs> so. Cool. Oh, and you're getting chickens. Nice. Get yourself some homemade, home, homegrown eggs, which are awesome. We get, <clears throat> living out in the middle of nowhere now, we, we get our dairy, our, our milk and eggs delivered every week. We were actually doing that even on the west side. We had the uh, Smith Brothers was delivering. And milk delivery is so nice. We, we just hardly leave. It's great. <clears throat> All right. So let's jump over to the ironing board. Not my mother's ironing board, so my mother's ironing board has this hot dude on it. Because that's how my mother is. She's had that for decades. <laughs> All right. So I like to iron my seams to make sure the next part goes on correctly. Boom. One. Excellent. All right. Let's now put the reinforcing part of the seam on. I think I also need a little more tension on here. Maybe a little more tension. Bottom thread. I gotta check my, oops, my camera. I gotta check my user's manual on this one, which should be in here. Yeah, there we go. Where's the tension part? Yeah, it's gotta be here somewhere. Threading tensions. Okay, if the upper tension is too tight. Ready to watch stream upper so okay. It's too loose. Shuttle thread underside. So I need to tighten this tension a little bit. Alright. <clears throat> I do have an electric machine. But I really like my old treadle machine. It's pretty awesome. And I can do this. Oh, I can do the streaming. But if electricity went out, I can still do my sewing. And of course, I can still play guitar because I got acoustic. So it's like an acoustic sewing machine. There you go. That's what we're doing. Acoustic sewing. Perfect. Get this going. crazy too to think that this sewing machine was made over a century ago and still works awesome and that's a, that's a pretty nice scene you know, I tend to just right now good that looks that's what we're looking for and like right there I'm going through three layers of denim and there, there's one part on a pair of jeans on the waistband at least the way I make them where I have to go through 12 layers of denim and uh, that one slows us down a little bit, but my machine can handle it. I uh, ever get leg cramps? No, you know, it's, it's funny. When, when you start reading on how to use these treadle machines, a lot of people talk about you're gonna have to build your legs up, and you really don't. Because one thing that a lot of people don't recognize about sewing, with no regard to what kind of machine you're using, electric, treadle, serger, wh whatever it is, most of your time is not actually sewing. It's pinning, 
it's cutting, it's ironing, it's placing, and there, there's, I, I would say out of the 12 to 14 hours it takes to make a pair of jeans, I'm probably actually only sewing for about two hours, and the rest of it's all just getting ready for that. Like, there's one point when you have to do the seam along the inside, so you basically go from the ankle to the crotch all the way back to the ankle. And even that only takes about like three minutes, maybe. And, and on this kind of a machine, you know, on, on a, an electric machine, it goes quite a bit quicker. So the actual sewing part isn't much. Pinning that, that takes a while. <laughs> so so you, you don't really get much of a leg workout on this. It seems like you would. And, and it's funny too, and, and I, I'm, I've, I've had quite a bit of experience before I started using a treadle machine. This is only my second pair of jeans on, on this machine. But people talk about how you know you really gotta you know learn to use the machine. You'll start out with a piece of paper and no thread and learn how to use it. And I'm like, I just went straight to it. I'm like, this is not that hard. Treadle machines are not very hard to use. People, I think it's kind of like making pie. People talk about how hard it is to make pie crust. You know what? It's not hard to make pie crust. It's actually pretty freaking easy to make a pie crust. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. So, <laughs> yeah, I think people want certain things to be hard because it seems like you're at a higher level of skill or whatever. Electricity, what's, I'm not sure what that is. I, I, I don't know what you guys are talking about. No, no, we, uh, we did some surgery on a person down the road and we just got him drunk, you know, and went, packed their leg off with a saw, you know, tied up with a belt. Give him some, give him some leather to chew on. You know, I don't know what this electricity thing is you're even talking about. I don't know what all these lights are either. <laughs> all right, let's do our next scene here. Because right, really, I mean, I've been streaming for about a half hour now, and I've probably only done this for about 45 seconds. So, <laughs> the actual sewing is is a small bit of sewing, which is a shame. It really is. But it's the way it works. And again, my mother, so when, when I started making my own jeans, I had gone out to buy a pair of jeans. And I thought, oh, you know, okay, I'm pretty smart. I know what to do here. So, and then this is kind of day I went to the store Mervyn's, which I, th I think went out of business at around 2009 or something. And so I went out there to buy a pair of jeans. Why? Well, because they're a, a store that sells jeans. So I thought I was really on top of it, right? So I go in there and they don't have my size. So I'm like, oh, okay. Get some quick Randy thinking. I'm like, you know what? I'll go to Fred Meyer. So I went to Fred Meyer. They didn't have my size. Uh -oh. Jason Penny. They didn't have my size. I ended up going to five freaking department stores that day. No one had my size. And I'm like, well, you know what? I can order some jeans online. But the quality control on jeans is just so garbage that you don't even, you kind of got to try them on and make sure the size is correct. So I'm like, at, at this point, I'm in Marysville, uh, play a city in Washington, a little north of Seattle. I, I think everyone on probably knows that. <clears throat> True story. Um, so I'm like, you know what? There's a fabric store right up, right up the road. I'll bet I can make a pair of these. So I go, I buy a couple yards of fabric. You know, I talk to the person at the store. I'm like, you know, how, how much do I need? So <clears throat> I bought a couple yards of denim and I went home. I took an old pair of jeans apart and I'm just like really paying attention to what I'm taking apart. Okay, how, how these pieces go together. And then I called my mom up who's watching right now. And she, uh, I said, you know, can I come over and use your sewing machine? So yeah, come on over. So that first pair took me about three days to make. I probably put about 20, 20 25 hours into that first pair. They came out great. They, I wore those for a long time. And then when I got done, my mom was like, you know, I've got an extra sewing machine. If you're going to keep doing this, take it. So I'm like, sure. Yeah, that'd be great. <clears throat> got to go shut down the pizza joint. Log back in. After you absolutely enjoy that. Have a good time shutting down the pizza joint. So yeah, so that, that started my jeans journey. I haven't, I haven't bought a pair of sets, and it was great. 
<clears throat> All right, so let's get this going. Boom. Trying to be all fancy schmancy with my cameras here. This sewing machine is not actually the oldest one we've got here. We've got a machine that was built in, as near as we can tell, sometime in the 1880s. And that one is not working right now. We could, we could get that one working. We'd have to buy a treadle for some sort of a stand for all this, but it's, it's a pretty cool little machine as well. Cool. This is where I start thinking, did I actually do this right? Have I missed something? And it's, it's, it's so, because it, I don't make these all the time, you know, so it's like, sometimes you'll, you'll put a piece on upside down, backward, whatever, and then you're like, oh, seam ripper time. Time to start cussing. <clears throat> okay. So this, this is the back side of the jeans here. Just lined up and pinned together. jeans we got here it is it's kind of cool when you you uh, make some garment shirt some jeans or, or whatever it's just like hey this is I did this it's, it's kind of cool I've got a, a long jacket that I I don't wear this time of year out in Eastern Washington because we're roasting out here but it's really cool and I get people asking me about that thing all the time. I've always had a thing for cool long jackets. And so yeah, people ask me like, that jacket is so cool, where'd you get that one? I made that myself and they're like, get out of town. It's, it's great, it's a good feeling, it really is. And I'll also kind of brag about my parents here, because this is kind of how we were raised. I remember when I was, we moved into the house my parents are currently in when I was four. Well, it was actually the same house. They actually moved the house from one location to another. Interesting story. <clears throat> and uh, not long after that, we were at some sort of a state fair or uh, uh, garage sale, not garage sale, but uh, swap meet kind of thing. And my parents saw this couch they liked. It was made up of like two by fours and this kind of, it was, it was a hippie couch basically. And <clears throat> it was too expensive for them, but they're like, you know, they, they took a look at it for a while and they're like, dude, we can totally make one of these. And so they just did. So they went, they just bought the lumber and they bought the fabric and they bought the stuffing and they made this. And we had that couch for like years. It was great. So I, I've always, I just kind of grew up in kind of a, a DIY attitude family. That's that's kind of our shtick there. It's what we've what we've always done. And on my my it definitely rubbed off on both my brother and I. So my, my parents did us a very good service with that one. And you know, like my mom says, it's like if someone else can do it, well, so can I. Yeah, that's pretty solid right there. Okay. I feel like I might be doing something wrong. So before I actually start stitching, that's when I look to make sure I'm looking at my stuff correctly here. Okay, yeah. 
I think that's right. Let's see what we do with this. <laughs> so this now, let's see, I'm gonna end up going through for a brief period part of this. Most of this is two layers, but I'm gonna be going through one, two, three, four, five, six. So I, got, I think I'll actually go through 12 layers on this part once I do this second stitch. Now here on this treadle machine, the, uh, the foot is very solid. Like a lot of newer machines, the, the foot will bevel. I don't know if that's the right word, but it'll, it'll, it'll move around a little bit. So here, when you get to like this bigger scene, you gotta be really cautious that you are going over it correctly. And also with these treadle machines, you gotta be very careful not to pull on the, you gotta let the, the feed dogs do the feed because if you push or pull this, it's very likely to snap your needle. So this part here, I'm always willing to proceed with a bit of caution. And you know, and I, I would I would never claim that these treadle machines are actually superior to new machines. They're obviously, construction-wise, 110 years old still works great. Um, someone definitely got their money out of it. The original price, I believe, on this was about eight dollars, <laughs> which is fantastic. But uh, it, it's not a superior machine. It's 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 constructed extremely well. But you know, like things like you know this this foot not having the, the ability to move, like here you get a little bit of a loose seam just for a stitch or two, and then everything's in the clear. So now we can kind of readjust our stuff. Make sure we get everything in place. there. All right. One more seam down. Rocking and rolling. It's really hard to find original needles for these. I found there's a, a FAF, P-F-A-F-F, -F, which is the kind of machine my mother had. They're freaking awesome. There's a FAF industrial one that the needle fits and it just barely clears, but it clears. So I can use my machine. Yeah, this, this machine was actually given to me by my buddy Jake. I was talking to him. And so Jake and I were in a band together called Hades Machine. And there was always this big joke about me making my own clothes. I make my own vests, make my own jeans. I make a few of this, this shirt is not one of mine, but I have made a few shirts. So they, they, they were always just kind of ribbing me about that. And, uh, <clears throat> So one day I was, I was saying to Jake, I was like, yeah, I don't, I'd really like to make a pair of jeans out of an old treadle machine. He's like, dude, I got one of those in my basement. You can have it. And I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah. So he gave me this and it was in surprisingly good shape. I, I cleaned it up and uh, boiled it up and it worked great. It was, it was kind of funny because the, the original user's manual says to, you know, if, if it's been out of use for a while, clean it with kerosene. 
And so I went down to the local uh, kind of farm, excuse me, farm supply place. And I wanted to buy just like, you know, a couple ounces of kerosene. You know, they, they usually sell it by the gallon. They didn't even know how to charge me for it. It was, it was great. <clears throat> but I got my couple ounces of kerosene. I cleaned the machine up. It's awesome. Pressing your seams is often a very good idea in sewing. I think that any sewers watching would definitely agree with that. somewhere. <clears throat> it's kind of humorous, you know, tomorrow I'm going to be standing right where I'm currently sitting, just rocking out to some heavy metal thing, doing a show with all the lights flashing and stuff. I'm a complex person. Okay, so I'm gonna end up going through nine pieces of denim on this one. Old Minerva's got no problem with that at all. She'll kick that stuff right in the face. Take low over that seam again. Right, start going by hand here. And particularly, it is very easy for this needle to get misaligned when you're going over this heavier stuff, so don't want to break it. Oh yeah, that's feeling it there. That's feeling it. Oh yeah, Minerva's not quite kicking it in the face. She's doing well. She's doing nicely here. And this is a much bigger knob to. Uh, work on here so a little tougher getting on the edge now we're back into the goods there all right we are in good shape kids <clears throat> Amrita hey how you doing hey I appreciate you too thanks for coming in. hey I'm curious have you seen any of my online streaming shows I've been streaming every Friday Amrita is a uh, uh, I've been a fan of my music for quite a long time. So, good to see you here. Yeah, I love sewing, it's just fun. So, for, for anyone on Facebook, just so you know, I am streaming right now to, I think, nine different websites. And 
Uh, so if, with Facebook, you will not see what other people are typing. So there's, there's people typing on YouTube and on Twitch, and it could come up on a few others. So if, I, if I, it looks like I'm answering questions that you don't see on there, that's why. Everyone else should see, if you're on YouTube or Twitch or any of the others, you should see Facebook stuff. I see it all. Actually, I don't. There's actually some of the websites where people could be typing stuff to me and I don't even see it. And so if that's the case, my apologies. Um, I should actually... I've got some bookmarks here with that. Let's just see if those come up. Um, I doubt anyone's watching on those other websites. It was just kind of a test to do the, the multi-streaming thing. So... Um, it looks like I'm live on Nemo and Afrika and maybe on Vaughn. Not sure if I'm live on. Oh, yeah, I'm live on Vaughn. And what's this one? This is Ricardo. And what's this one here? Streaming. I don't know if I'm live on this one. So anyway. If anyone's on any of those other websites, I uh, may or may not see what you type in, so. Been mad busy, you need to... Yeah, you know what, feel free. I haven't actually sent anything out to my mailing list for a long time, but right now, so, for a while I was putting out a new album every week, and that took me up to my 50th album. And then I slowed way down, and then we moved to Eastern Washington, and so, you know, there was a, a bunch more slowing down. And then I got, so right, I, I finished up my 64th album. I, I released that last September. It was called In This Fashion. And, and I've put out a lot of material that I'm with, but I haven't sent any of that out. It's, it's all just been digital releases and then doing online shows and stuff. And so my, so my 65th album is, has been in the works for a while, but I, I identified some gaps in my knowledge of music production. And I felt that my music production was not up to par with where I'd gotten with my musical composition. And so I've been studying a lot of music production. And actually Jake, who gave me this machine, uh, he and I did a Zoom session a couple months ago now maybe. And, and he showed me, because he, he's become very good on the production side of things. And he showed me some things that really helped me out a lot. So I've, I've learned a few things that have really, really been beneficial there so so the 65th album is sounding really good and it's, it's still not quite where i want it and it's going to be cool because it's going to have for the first time ever saxophone i'll be recording sax but it's the only thing i haven't recorded is the saxophone and it's also got my first um my first album that includes a cover tune which is a heavy metal variations of three blind mice and i'm, just, I'm really pleased with where this album's going i feel like it's kind of setting a new um, standard for my music, a new, maybe a new path would be a good way to put it, but it, it's going to be kidding. I don't know what's going to come out. It might, it might be uh, two months, it might be next week, I don't know. But when it does, and, and I kind of get my new, when I get on this new path, I will probably start hopefully rocking out some more stuff, kind of rapid fire again for I don't know how long. Um, <clears throat> I do have a name for my 100th album. So, I do plan on doing at least that much. All right. So, yeah, definitely, uh, if you want to... I don't get on Facebook very much because I hate it. One of the great things is the way I the way I do my my multicast and my multi-streaming is I don't have to go on any of these websites. I go to restream.io and I set everything up right there and then I go into my broadcast software and I hit stream. And so I never go on Facebook because I hate it. <laughs> uh, I generally hate social media. Like on my, my smarty phone, I don't have any social media apps in there. But, um, that is my web, themadpoet.net, and you can go to that, and there is a contact link in there that goes straight into my email. And what I'm actually going to do 
is I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna send myself a quick test email to make sure it's working. So we'll say that my name is Bob, my email, email is bob at bob.bob, and my website is bob, and my comment is bob. Because I'm just imagining it like that. Now let's see if that actually shows up in my email. Oh, please enter a URL, bob.com. You know what, just shut up. Just sh shut up website, you're a jerk. Okay. So let's see. Now pull up my email. Totally, it's totally working, so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a good way to go about it. So yeah, feel free to send me a message through the website and that will come straight to my email. And uh, yeah, I, I need to send some stuff. So probably when my 65th album comes out, I will print those up on CD and send that out to my, my mailing list. I've, I've got it for, for if anyone happens to be watching who's not familiar, I have an, e, an actual snail mail mailing list. And I don't advertise it much these days because I haven't been active, but if you send me your, your mailing address through my website, then I will add you to my list and occasionally send you stuff. And isn't that fun? Cool. All right. So we have just created the back half of a pair of jeans. They're not very useful yet because they don't stay up well. But back half of a pair, this would be the inside. You can see that a little better in the light. And it's, you know, one, another thing you, you kind of find when you start sewing is you don't really realize just how much fabric goes into a garment. Because like the, the legs on a pair of jeans don't look like there's as much fabric as there really is. It's quite a lot, even for a skinny little guy like me. So like, like the first time I made a shirt, I was like, the sleeves have almost as much fabric as the back. It's crazy. <clears throat> like one sleeve, you know, it's like the sleeves like double the amount of fabric that you need. <clears throat> so, and I'm also, there are no guarantees this is going to happen. It may, it may not. But I am, I have been working for years on my singing. And <clears throat> I am writing an album that I plan to sing on. I've come a long way with my singing. I don't ever care if I'm great at it, but it would be, it would be amazing if I could just do one where I'm actually the primary vocalist. Uh, LP, actually all of, oh, you mean like vinyl. You know, we, we have a, a record player here. We have that upstairs. We, Sarah and I, when we moved here to Eastern Washington, we get this wonderful house. It's, it's like 83 years old. It was built, yes, 83, it was built in 1938. And we went and we got a, uh, Sarah found a uh, restaurant booths on Craigslist for like 30 bucks or 50 bucks or something. So we got that and we got a record player. So we, we play old jazz records on and stuff. I will, I will not be printing to anything weird. Uh, I, I should say anything, there's nothing weird about that, but it's just it, less common. So pretty much the only thing I would be printing to are CDs, just because of the affordability part. It's, it is so expensive to print to vinyl. It's, it's, it's such an intense process. It's a cool process and I love vinyl, but it's, it's, yeah, it's just so much money. I, I, I would have no way of justifying that um, unless I was just, you know, somehow strike it really rich, which has not happened and it probably won't. <clears throat> but, so yeah, pretty much just CDs at this point. Th that would be cool though, to, to have them on vinyl. I, I do love vinyl. Um, I've even thought it would be cool, and I looked into this and it, it's even more expensive than vinyl. I thought it'd be cool to do an album and only release it on eight track. And release like a hundred of them on eight track. You know? But it's like, oh, that would just be so expensive to do that. And it's like, you know, it's cool, but not that many people have eight track players. So, that's kind of a thing. <clears throat> you sew, knit, and crochet. That's awesome. That's, I do not knit or crochet. I learned a little bit of crocheting from my grandmothers when I was a little guy. But I never, I was never proficient at that. 
But you know, those, those skills are just so good to have. And more people, I think more people need to do this kind of stuff. I think that people should sew their own clothes. And you know, not necessarily all the time, but they, they should know how to do it. They, they should kill an animal if they're gonna eat meat. And they should grow a garden if they're gonna eat vegetables. I've done all those things. Uh, I think you should be able to take care of your own stuff. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I'll tell you what, if you wish to support me, <clears throat> um, I, I, I'm not having any kind of plan to do like a Kickstarter or anything right now, but, but right now the big thing is I, I stream live shows every Friday to all of these platforms, you know, Facebook, you, face, you, Twitch is the biggest one. And still, I'm pretty a small. I'm a pretty small streamer. It's usually like six to ten people watching. But through that, there is uh, a place where you can tip me. I mean, in that, that's even available. I mean, on any stream, there, there there should be a link to to tip if you want. And I never require people to uh, give money for my streams, but always greatly appreciated if, if people ever want to support me and also uh, you know all, all of my albums are available on a pay what you can basis through Bandcamp. I'll throw the link up to this just in case anyone is so inclined. Even if you just want to share this on on Facebook or Twitter or MySpace or Friendster or whatever you kids are using these days for your rock and roll music. Um, where's my Bandcamp? There we go. TheMadPoet.BandCam.com And so, you know, yeah, if you want to check out any of my music that you have not checked out, it's all available. Uh, pay, pay what you can basis on Bandcamp, including free. I'm always happy when people download my music completely for free because I'm just a sharing kind of guy like that. Not stingy, not selfish. So... Cool. Uh, I'm not on Spotify, no. Um, I, I believe, I think that my very first album might be on Spotify back through when I was, I, I was, had that distributed through cdbaby.com. That was back in 2004, and I did my second one in 2018. <clears throat> and, and then of course, you're like 63 since then. And so I think that that one ended up on there, and maybe the Death Sonnets EP that I did might have ended up on Spotify. But I don't use any kind of distribution now. And it's just that there are things like, if you distribute through CD Baby, and someone on YouTube wants to use your music, you can't give them permit. There's, there's no exclusivity deal with CD Baby, but they still monitor this stuff, and it's still problematic. And so, I just basically started doing Bandcamp, YouTube, so all, all my albums are on YouTube, they're all on my website, they're all on Bandcamp, they're all also on a, a thing called Noise Trade, they're almost all on Noise Trade, Noise Trade is kind of hit and miss for its uploads, so that one was was a little tough to work with, so I haven't, like the last, I put two albums on there like three months ago and they never actually uploaded, but yeah, it, it's, it's unfortunate that this red tape stuff still happens even on the internet, it's like, it's supposed to be this big free, open, what's it, and um, sometimes that doesn't work out. So I gotta remember how to do back pockets now. Back pockets. So if you, like, you think about the size of your pocket, you know, it takes that much fabric to make your back pocket. It's, it's large. <clears throat> so, let's jump back over to the ironing board. Boom. See if we can get these guys right. So we'll need to. Yeah, yeah, getting getting pockets, your back pockets to be placed and sized correctly is you know I'm actually going to. I'll be back in just a moment. And for those who are one, are wondering about the music, I have uh, we just went into my 50th album, which is called Vehement Neutrality. 
that just I think we're on the first song of that. So that, I'm just kind of playing a few of my albums. I will be right back. I gotta get something out of the next room. Just want to take about half a minute. Actually, that I was talking a little while ago about that very first pair. Uh, yeah, hey, have a great night, mom and dad. Thanks for watching. Um, this is that very first pair of jeans that I took apart. I still use that same pair of jeans as my pattern to cut everything out. I still got that that pair of jeans. Now I've just got a blank pocket I can work with. And okay, this is my, it's been so long since I've done this. It's so long. Okay, we're switched around, so I'm actually in frame. Okay. about, you know, if my legs get cramped up using the treadle machine and I was explaining, you know, it's, it's so much more of this than actually making a seam. Uh, that, that is a very small part of much more ironing, placing, pinning, all of that stuff happens an awful lot more than actually sewing stuff together. That's how it should be, absolutely it should. <clears throat> I feel like I'm not doing this quite right. I want to make sure that I do it right. It just seems like better to do it right. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. yeah, that's not quite it. <laughs> job cutting these pockets out either. Fortunately there's a lot of room, wiggle room on pockets. If the if you, as long as you get them the, right, the same size and you place them correctly. You don't want your pockets to be placed off from one another because it will be very noticeable. <clears throat> Okay, so that's, that's a thing. Let's get this one. Myself with the iron there a little bit. 
somewhere with this thing. I am, you are particular as I am with an iron and feeling it is, so, yeah, true story. But you know, it's, being particular with this stuff, you get a good product when you're done. You really do. It's worth it. Yeah, the, the folding of the fabric on the pockets is always a little funky, and I'm slightly off here. Oh yeah, oh no, I did not have that quite. I wonder... Okay. Now to make sure you get that just right. twice, cut once, that's definitely applicable in anything where you're doing fine work like this. Definitely applicable in sewing. No, fast fashion doesn't work. You know, that's like Sarah, she does pinup stuff, pinup photography and stuff. And you know, she, she pointed out how so much of current fashion is designed to look good on a hanger rather than on a torso or a set of legs or a body and it's it's a really good point because that's how people buy now it's like oh this looks good in this picture good enough i'll take it that's not a good way to go about it it really doesn't work as well so when you make your own stuff you can make sure it's made the way you want it Exciting watching someone iron. Always do that with sewing, fast fashion women's clothing sucks. Uh, oh yes. I women have been so shorted on their clothing, and I don't get it. It's it's so unfair how the women's pockets are stupid. They're just absolutely stupid, and I don't understand it. It uh like, like my pockets, I mean, you down and put my whole hand in here. Women's pockets go about that far, and it's like, it's just so unfair. It's like, yeah, hey, sometimes we want to put our stuff in there. I'm mean, like, you can't even fit a credit card in there the short way, it's, it's terrible. And so, yeah, small, medium, larger, no, they're not. No. That is so true. So, fight the power. Always fight the power. 
All right. And like, like I was like I was talking earlier, you know, this learning to um, le learning to make my own jeans was not about saving money. It was about the fact that I couldn't find jeans that fit. But you do end up saving money because. <clears throat> uh, as long as, you don't, as long as you don't add up how much you charge per hour, because I'm losing a lot of money per hour, so to speak, but I also enjoy doing this. And I've always said, time that you enjoy wasting is not a waste of time. And I actually enjoy sewing. So, to me, totally worth it. So thank, thank you. Yeah, I, I do appreciate that. Oh yeah, I haven't had to take a seam out yet. I haven't had to use my my magic seam ripper yet, so I'm happy. And from the sounds of it, you know all about seam rippers because if you if you learn how to sew, knit, and crochet, you have had to pull some seams out. That is a fact. <clears throat> okay, don't want to forget this. Good, okay. And this one I think I can do without, actually, you know what? I think I better pin this one up. Hardwood and a claw foot, oh, that's awesome. We got, we've got hardwood floors here. Uh, you can't see the floor in the cameras right now, but we, we actually just put, this room had carpet in it. It's on a concrete slab, so we just put laminate wood floors in. But our, the upper two floors are hardwood and we love it. It's so, there was one room with carpet in it that we ended up making our bedroom 
and so I, it, I peeled it back when we moved in and found that there was hardwood under that too. So that was like one of the first things I did was just pull all that out. And, and yeah, so then, you know, uh, probably four months ago, I pulled it, five months ago, I pulled all the carpet out of here. I love hardwood floors. The, 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 the clawfoot tub though, that's, that's cool. I love clawfoot tubs, they're so awesome. Okay, yeah, I, I should pin this because I'm not good enough on that one. I know my limitations. Like I said, I'm decent at this, but there are people out there who can really run rings around me when it comes to sewing. So I will, I will take the cautious route. Alright. Boom. go. Okay, start there. A little treadle going. I was saying earlier that uh, these treadle machines don't have any, uh, oh, it's just the treadle machines, the vibrating shuttle machines don't have the possibility of zigzag stitch. They also don't have the possibility of a reverse stitch. So it's nothing but a straight strip stitch going forward. It's all you get. Oh yes. Yeah, I've never done that, fortunately. I've never gotten one of my fingers, but I know that can happen. It is a beautiful machine. I, I love this one. Still running over more than a century after it was built. That is just really cool to me. Let's get another reinforcing seam. You don't really need a reinforcing seam in the pocket, but you know, the, these are normally made on much more kind of high-tech machines that do the double stitching. To yet, like we're, we're we like old stuff. It's cool. Okay, gonna have to do a little more ironing on that. I heard this turn off, so let's go. All right, don't knock iron on the floor, Randy. Okay, there we go. So this one up. That's right. I should pin this. pockets on. Probably gonna stop for the night because I'm getting a little hungry and I also have homemade bread that I'm gonna make French toast out of. Yeah, you know it's it's there is like like the my my electric sewing machine is still it's an older one. It's like it's probably 25 30 years old and it still works great. Sarah's got a new machine, it's a brother and it's it's a great machine. Um but there's just something, there's something about the feel of these. They just feel good. And, and it's it's such a piece of art too. Like you said, it's just, it's a beautiful machine. All, all of the, 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 the detail work and the paint and stuff, which is probably, I guess, yeah, and all of this stuff, you know, it's probably lead paint, but you know, whatever, I'm tough. So, and yeah, and even like, like the detail work of the wrought iron down here and the, the treadle, and I wish, wish the lighting was a little bit better down there. If I do this again, I'll have to get some better lighting for the bottom. 
<clears throat> but yeah, these, these things will take care of you for a very long time. Touch. There might have been some background noise there. Okay. This camera's actually got a pretty good angle. That's, that's, that's not bad. Maybe a little bit higher so you could see some action, but I like that. Okay. To the ironing board briefly. Well, actually, it might be a little more than briefly, so you gotta place these pockets now. Let's iron these down a little, a little here. Fancy scissors. Good to clean as you go, get everything in place. You don't have as many stray threads when you get done with everything. seem to do on this guy. Let's see if I can get this right. So I'm Rita, if you're still on, have you ever used a treadle style machine? Yeah, not, not a lot of people have done this, so that's really cool.
Takes, takes a little while to figure this stuff out when you first try doing it though. take my time with to, uh, to make sure I'm placing correctly. Good to take your time with this stuff. I'm not on a timeline. I'm not being paid for this, so I can take my time. Top of the head. I'm sewing chalk in here. Oh, there it is. Boom. You prefer the, oh, the treadle machines. Yes. Ah, so cool. So cool. I, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I kind of do too. It's just there, there's like, there's more of a connection to the actual work that you're doing because it's, it's more kind of holistic with you. You're using your, more of your body for it. With a little, the, uh, you know, the, the foot pedal for the electrical machines is just kind of like a gas pedal in the car. It's just, uh, it's just a different connection. It, it is a good feeling. I, I'm with you there. Taking your time. Don't want to rush this stuff. I feel like I've got something ever so slightly wrong here. Oh, no, we're in good shape. that I took apart were for, for my patterns, a pair of Levi's, so these are basically a Levi's design. But I've, I've modified them a bit over the years to, to make them a little more personalized. Okay, I need to get a ruler. So there's going to be another brief break. I'll be back in few seconds hopefully. Alright, let's make sure I got these measurements 
Measure twice, cut once. So I, I don't know how anyone can try to do something without sewing chalk. If you don't have it, get it. It's so helpful in so in so many ways, not just like for you know a few specific things. You'll, you'll use the crap out of your sewing chalk. Okay, I feel like I'm just gonna place that pocket in a touch from where it's at. Other than that, we look good. <clears throat> now one thing I will start wondering about around this point is like like I was talking about Sarah's newer sewing machine. She's got this brother machine that's really nice and it, it warns you like you know, a little bit before your bobbin runs out. On this, you know your bobbin ran out when you see that you got no more bobbin thread. That's it. That's, there's no warning. There's no, you, you can't even see, even if you can see the bobbin, you, there's no way of knowing how much thread's inside once you get to that point. It just doesn't happen. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna put that there. These pockets ended up being slightly different shape. Oh, okay, no, nope. they're just slightly. I got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah, these are slightly different shape than those. That is totally okay. That doesn't hurt anything. Yeah, it is true. You are, we are, we're eye to eye on this, Amrita. I don't, I don't know if I'm actually saying your name right, Amrita. Is that correct? Am I getting the, the, uh, the stress is correct on that, Amrita? Like, like uh, on the, on the reek? Is that where the stress goes? Yeah, yeah, that is definitely. I mean, yeah, I mean, like you know, and if you want to do like. Obviously, like embroidery and stuff, you know, you're not going to do that on an old vibrating shuttle machine that can't even do a, a, a zigzag stitch. So, you know, you got to have the right tool for the job. Like, like when I make, you know, when I sew like really stretchy fabric, then, then sometimes I'll be using a, uh, a, a serger machine. I think we've got, between Sarah and I, I think we have like 11 sewing machines. <laughs> and we, we got, we got th this old one, we've got a, uh, we got like a 1930s, 1920s white rotary, 1920s or 30s singer. I don't know if either of those actually work. We got the 1880s one. I forget the manufacturer. That one does not work. It would, it would need some work to get going. Uh, she's got a serger and her brother machine, and I've got the Kenmore machine. And then the Minnesota it was actually a Sears product. Um, so kind of like the Kenmore machines. This was an earlier version of that. So you can get these out of the, the Sears catalog. And this one, like I said, uh, near as I can tell, was made in the, the area of 1905 to 1910. So, old. And I, I, I saw an original ad for it where it, it went from like eight, eight to 14 dollars for the Minnesota Model A's, depending on which cabinet you had and which year it came out. Okay. I feel like you can just We're in pretty good shape here. Pretty good shape. Yeah, yeah, no, it was it was just so cool. Like like I said, it was it was given to me, which is amazing. Let's <clears throat> set that one aside for now. That was an easier place. This pinned in. And this is where, this is a great spot to really take your time with making sure you pin this correctly. Because it's really easy to get like the, the fabric like a little bit loose on one side of this. So you kind of got to pin it, set it down, make sure it's still placed, check that you got that in there correctly. That's feeling pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. 
<laughs> yeah, but you know, in, in 1910, it wasn't easy to come up with 12 bucks. You know, most people would struggle coming up with 12 bucks back then. So um, it, was, it, was not, it was not actually a cheap machine at the time. You know, one thing, and I, I, think, I think that you'll, you'll agree with this, is machines that are made today are not going to be working in 100 years. And that's part of what's so cool about this, is that it's, this will probably be working in another hundred years just as well as it does now. It's just such a solidly, I mean, this is all cast iron. Every, dude, there are no belts inside. Like on my Kenmore machine, like this is where we're belts and stuff, which that's great. But this one is all gears and levers and awesome. <clears throat> Solid construction. It's a beautiful thing. Okay. Hey, I've like got this pretty good. And I've had plenty of this, this pocket actually went on. That feels good. I've had plenty of times where I get like all you know all, all four or five pins put in here. I'm like, nope, take it out, do it again. I feel like this one went in pretty nicely. That feels good to me. Easy mistake. So strange how it seems cheaper now. Yeah, yeah, totally. No, solid construction so much better. Easy mistake. If you're ever putting in pockets, remember not to sew the part where you should be able to put your phone in there or your wallet or whatever. It's very easy to accidentally sew all the way around a pocket. I know this because I've done it. <laughs> so if you're ever sewing a pocket, remember, one side needs to stay open. <laughs> Very important. Do not forget. And I actually like to start my pockets. So the pocket seam will like go all the way around the three sides. It'll come in and then you come back and do your reinforcing stitch on the inside. So I actually like to start off on the side a little bit because this part here is really thick. I got like uh, four or five pieces of denim I'm going through, five layers. And so doing that where you do your little reverse stitch, which on this you just have to turn the garment around to do a reverse stitch. Um, it's gonna be a little, lot harder if you do it up on the, the corner of this. I don't think that's coming through very well on the camera. But, so I usually start a bit down the side on this one. And that makes it easier. And I usually go around the, the actual house, basically do an edge stitch on this. Glad that you approve of my methods. That makes me feel good when when people who do a lot more of this than I do are like, yep, that's the right way to do it. So that is good to hear. This part of putting on pockets, I, this is a, a fun seam. I enjoy this one. Yeah, I love how the treble sounds too. It, it is a good sound. 
I strongly concur. Thicker areas here. I'll watch myself in this area. Like I said, I don't mind slowing down and doing it by hand, taking the time. You know, I, I, I got to give another big advantage to the uh, to the modern machines on Rita. Uh, these don't have a light bulb on them. <laughs> And I'll say, having the light bulb in the uh, in the electric machines that is, that was a brilliant brilliant move to make that really makes a difference. So I will I will give them that one for sure. <clears throat> All right. That. Cool. Yeah, that is a thing. <laughs> I also, uh, I cook almost exclusively on cast iron. I love cast iron skillets, cast iron cooking. I actually, I just recently started doing, I've, I've historically cooked my pizzas on a pizza stone, but I just made myself a pizza. It's so heavy, it's 15 inches of just plate steel, quarter inch thick. Sanded it all down and, and got all the chemical junk off it. Uh, seasoned it and uh, kind of hard to handle because it is very heavy and it gets really slippery with just a little bit of grease on it. But man, it really makes a fantastic thin crust pizza. All right, back to the treadle. All right, cruising on around. Corner. This is coming out all right. Yeah, I can appreciate how, like the people who get really good. <sighs> Country glass pie dish. Yeah, yeah, I've got a, I've got a uh, glass pie dish. The last pie I made, it's been a while. Uh, it was peach pie with dark chocolate and coffee grounds. It was amazing. <laughs> Uh, I got the idea from a friend of mine, an old roommate who was making pies. He did cherry pie with dark chocolate and coffee grounds. I'm like, I want to try this with peach. Brilliant. And then I also, I've got a, a bread dish for like my banana bread and stuff. That's a, a glass bread dish. And th those, those are nice. Those work really well. Okay. 
You know, like, like I, was, I was about to say that, you know, the working with pins thing, I just kind of accept that I'm not going to sew enough to be so proficient that I'm not going to need pins. And I, I know people like that, that they can, they can get away with, with almost none, or in some cases, no use of pins, but I'm just like, I'm not even on that level. I'm okay with that. So, it, yeah, I, I don't really care for it, but I just accept that that's, that's where I'm at with it. So, I'll take it. Okay. And then we get right there, and on a treadle machine, if you want to do a back stitch, you just turn your garment around and go the other way. <clears throat> and we're locked in. One pocket down. Beautiful. Uh, looks good. I did not run out of... Ah, Renee's back! Welcome back, Miss Renee. Hope that everything went well on closing the restaurant down. So as far as progress, we've got the back of the jeans. This is going to... Those white marks are where the second pocket's going to go. It's kind of hard to see. Let me just kind of get a closer up on. You know, three here. Got one pocket put in. You can put a wallet or a cell phone or a dead fish in there. You know, if that's the kind of thing you're into. Whatever you want, really. That's what pockets are for. Putting stuff in. Okay. <laughs> so let's place this other pocket. And I have made both zipper and button fly style jeans. I tend to prefer zippers, though the button fly is a little easier to make. Zippers can be a little tough to put in, but overall I, I think I like the zippers better, so. I, I, there's no chance. I'm, I'm going to put this pocket on, and then I'm going to sign off for the evening because it's just about French toast time. I'm getting a little of the, the French toast hunger going here, so. Triple chocolate peanut butter... Wait. Triple chocolate peanut butter cup brownies. That sounds amazing. Have been stolen from one of my kitchens before. <laughs> Last pie was a chocolate black, oh, chocolate black, black bear. That sounds brilliant. <sighs> yeah, you know, blackberries are kind of tough to pick, but you know, I, I believe that you're in Western Washington. I'm Rita, I could, I could very easily be wrong about that, but you definitely get good access to blackberries out there, and it, it's worth going out and picking them. Renee is my daughter, who just came back on. When she was little, we went out a few times. I remember one time in particular, I, th I think that her cousin, my nephew, was with us, and we went out and picked a bunch of huckleberries. And I had thrown some bread in the bread machine, and we came back and made homemade huckleberry jelly and put it on homemade bread. That was pretty awesome. Yeah, I think, I think that uh, Amrita and I are uh, of a similar mind. <clears throat> Do it your own way. DIY it is a good way to comport yourself in life. I think this is going to be a good pair of jeans. I'm feeling, feeling good about this. Um, can, and can, considering that I've been yakking my brains out with people and, uh, and that I haven't sewn a pair of jeans for a year, almost a year and a half. I think, I think I'm, I'm, I'm feeling okay about this. I still in Seattle, cool, very cool. <clears throat> All right. Again, this is one of those critical places where you got to take your time, place things correct. And this is a little funky because right where I'm doing this, I need to move over just a touch because I'm right on this uh, hinge. And so it feels like I've got like a weird piece of fabric crumpled up or something. I'm like, no, I want to make sure I get this right. So let's not be on that hinge. That feels much better. Good. 
Yeah, I find it very, very admirable when people can do this stuff without pins. It's, it's impressive. It just, it just shows, you know, a lot of experience is what it really is. The less experience you have, the more pins you're probably going to work uh, with. <laughs> cool. Uh, French toast time is, is not uncommon over here. I'm not sure what the weird feeling is referring to, but I'll go ahead and agree with you anyway. Whatever. <laughs> did our music stop? Did I go through two albums already? Apparently I did not have that on repeat. Let's throw another album in there for our last few minutes. What have we got? This will be in my backup drive, my archives, my MP3s. Let's listen to a little uh, Patron Saint of Murderers. I don't even have that one in here, but it's not. Let's do Partially Inexplicable. I, I like that album. This first song is called Mistaken Identity. I, I felt like like par partially inexplicable was, was, was some of my better guitar work on that. It was one of the songs, the one of the albums I did inside of a week, and um, uh, I, I definitely found myself enjoying listening to that one. Is feeling right. Oh yeah, totally, definitely. Yeah, you know that that's something that, like I said, I think that's very admirable. It's it's a level that I will say that I I really don't aspire to because it's you know I'm mean, I'm gonna spend more of my time playing guitar. That's that's this is a secondary thing for me, but. Uh, yeah, you know, I think if you're gonna really get into something, then just really get into it and, and get into it and make it happen. Get after it. It's good to go for it. And, you know, clearly, like, just from talking to you here, clearly this is something you do quite a bit of. So, that is awesome. Let's see how those pins went in. Make sure we're sitting flat. Yeah, feels good. I'll work with that. Alrighty then. Oh, that's cool. I didn't actually know that you were a musician. That's awesome. Yeah, class. I love playing classical. It, 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 I, I don't I wouldn't really call anything I do like a morning ritual or anything, but one of the first things I usually do is I'll just grab my classical guitar and just play scales for like five, ten minutes. I just kind of wake my brain up with that. Uh, pretty much the first thing I do most days is just, just play some scales on my classical guitar. I love classical. In fact, I was just reading something about uh, that old movie Crossroads with Ralph Macchio and Steve Vai, and uh, man, that was a, that was a really well done movie. And it's, it's something to watch for in that is Ralph Macchio was is not a guitar player, so he would have to fake it. And then for the close up shots, they actually used a classical guitar player named William Can William Cannongeiser, who's just a, a brilliant classical guitarist. And so all the, the handwork, the close-up handwork, is all 
Bill Cannengeiser and uh, and then the far away stuff where, where Ralph Macchio could kind of fake it, then we actually see Ralph Macchio. Yeah, drum kits though, you know, dr drum kits take up a lot of space and make a lot of noise. They're they're tough. They're they're, they're tough to work with. You got you got to have the area for that. So I can I can appreciate that sometimes that doesn't work out. So now the question is, are we going to make it with my bobbin? I feel like I, I probably have quite a bit left on there, but I haven't used this machine enough to really be able to judge how far, how far I'm getting with it. <clears throat> but we're going to know pretty soon. 12-piece drum kit, that's, oh that's beautiful. What brand do you got? It's a mix. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you kind of get the the flavor for I like these kind of toms. This kind of I know like like Neil Neil Peart of Rush. He had like I, I don't know the number, but it was some just absurd number of snares because he would like you know different kinds of rooms. He would want different snare sounds in. So if they're playing like an indoor stadium or an outdoor festival, um, hey, you know, first act is a great place to start. You gotta start some. You know, my, my first guitar cost eight bucks. I was eight years old. And uh, it was actually a, a, a swap meet out in Everett at the old Puget Park, which is no longer there. It's condos or something now. An old drive in movie theater. And <clears throat> there was this little six string there for, for 10 bucks. It was listed. And so I asked my dad, you know, can I, can I buy this guitar? And he said, well, you know, if you could talk the guy into selling to you for $8, I'll let you get it. So I'm back, I told the guy that, you know, this is what my dad said, I'd like to have the guitar, it looks like it'd be fun. And so he sold it to me for, I think it was probably worth like 50 cents. Uh, and then it was funny, just a couple years ago, I heard my dad telling the story from his perspective. And he's like, yeah, you know, Randy asked me for this guitar, and I think I only had like nine bucks in my pocket. So I had to tell him to convince the guy to sell it to him for less. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that, that's, that's great. And you know, and I've always said, you know, do what you can with what you've got from where you're at. Uh, and like, I, I think you said you haven't seen my streams, but they're kind of cool. So I've got these back behind me. Uh, they're not plugged in, so I can't turn them on right now, but I've got, I've got a, a pretty nice stage light setup. So there's like uh, 14 lights back behind me. I've got a couple under my front desk. I got some lights, the ones that are on me right now, um, for for the front lighting. And so the, I program the, these fairly complex light shows. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah, it is a cute story. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I get a smoke machine going, and so it's, it's it's a really cool little light show. But you know, the the first when I started streaming just a little over a year ago, I only had like four lights. You know, and so I just had these four lights sitting. I think I had six, a four in the back, and then a couple up front, and it was really dark. And I just had these four lights kind of flashing around. And, but yeah, you, you know, you start with what you got, and do what you can from where you're at. So, if you only got a cheap guitar, start on a cheap guitar. Got to get started somewhere. This is going on nicely. Pleased with that. I have definitely had uh, parts go in much less. This has actually been a really smooth setup tonight. This has worked really well. And considering that I haven't sewn with this, I haven't sewn anything in a year. No, that's not true. I've made a couple uh, like pairs of shorts and stuff, but yeah, yeah. You know, Kennelly Keys, there's one in Everett up on Evergreen Avenue. And it makes me so happy 
there's a music store there now. And the reason is, in the early 2000s, I worked in casinos for about six years, uh, dealing blackjack and other table games, eventually became a tournament director, and I hate casinos. I hate them. And for like, I think three months, myself and a few friends worked in a casino that is in the same building that is now Kennelly Keys, and the casino went out of business, and they, that particular casino just didn't treat people well. And so it just makes me so happy that there's actually a music store now in that place, and it's no longer a casino. So, that's a good thing. Let's get some visual here. on the big old seam. Oh, I have to move this one manually a little bit. What am I going through here? One, two, three, four, five layers. All right, now the corner. Yeah, it's a good story. I'm not, not, not a casino fan. I've, I've just seen it's just, you know, there's nothing wrong with going to a casino for just entertainment, but there are too many people who claim they're going there for entertainment and they're not. And they're, you know, I've seen people, you know, with you know, $90,000 of credit card debt break down crying on a table. And you're not allowed to tell them that they should step away. You're just like, you want to, you want to sit in this hand? It's like, it's just not cool. Oh, got it. No, that is not sitting right. There we got it. Not want to. There we go. Not want to break that needle. Good. It's a little room quite a bit. Oh, you were raised in Mukatio, cool. Yeah, I like Mukatio, that's a good town. Oh, you know what? Ran out of bobbin thread. Did I? Oh, something got funky here. Something got funky. We need to go into repair mode. All right, where's my skizzers? Just, just when I was talking about the night going smooth. Some machine was like, oh, you think so, do you? That's not bad. My little stitch there can work with that. Something got a little, I'm not sure what happened there, but something got a little fun. I can work with that. I'll right, we'll just back this up a little ways. Regulars at my Twitch shows, uh, well, also on Facebook and everything, but uh, she usually watches on Twitch. She went to Kamiak. That would have been before your time. She's about to be out in Navy retire style, so I think she's only got two years left for retirement, so she must have graduated probably around 2000, 99, 2001, something, but yeah. I think 
I'm back on track, kids. I think I'm back on track. Pins out of here. Boom. Oh, and now I did run out of bobbin thread. This corner does not want to happen. <laughs> okay. Well, this corner is not liking life here. Okay, well, let's wind another bobbin then. And the actual bobbin winding mechanism is the only thing on this machine that's not quite complete, so got to kind of improvise a little bit. Pull my bobbin out of here. Alrighty. Fortunately, the bobbin mechanism does work. It's just a little bit off. Back there, my guy. And we are off to the races, hopefully. No. What did I get wrong here? Oh, I went the wrong way. <laughs> Okay. Let's try this again, shall we, kids? Yeah, I can see how that would be a little, a little weird. <clears throat> Got asked if I was prepping for Halloween quite off. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm not so, I, I've always kind of pictured you as being kind of the steampunk kind of a gal. Uh, just just because the things that you're interested in, the kind of music you're into, and I, I believe you're friends with, with Mikey, aren't you? You know, he's, he's real into that kind of stuff. Okay, let's see if I got this right this time. I do. There we go. Wound, wound bobbin. Got it. Not my best work, but it is functional. Cool. Well, tell him I said hi, please. I haven't seen him in ages, like 50,000 years or something. Okay, well, let's see if I can remember how to get this bobbin in here correctly. Should go that way. Down there and back up. Into the shuttle. And then lock. And undo. Oh. 
Oh, not quite. Not quite. Let's try that again. Oh, I think I left quite enough thread hanging out at the end. Well, that should be enough. Let's give it a little more just to be, just to be crazy. There we got it. Okay. Oh, hey, that's cool. Yeah, you know, I I met him a couple times when I was working at the Everett Theater. I helped them kind of with some of their backstage setup for the shows. He seemed like a really cool guy. I've heard, I've heard some people speak negatively about him, but I've spoken with him on the phone a couple times and met him a couple times in person. I always had a very good impression of Robert, and I really like Abney Park. Their music is so awesome. They, they absolutely nail the whole steampunk feel. And of course, I mean, their look is, is top notch. Um, yeah, no, I really like Abney Park a lot. They're great, and also, uh, I got to know the guys a little bit from Steam Power Draft when I was working at the, the theater. And they, they put on a, a really fun show too. They were they were great. Okay, so one kitchen my giddy up and one running out of bobbin thread. Let's see if we can get this to happen. Is Steam Power one of their albums? I, I think I've got like two of their albums, I think. I've got I've got the one with uh, Sleep Isabella, which is probably my favorite Abbey Park song. That's so kicking. I, I don't have their full discography, but yeah, they, they got some great stuff. Oh, you mean Steam Power Draft? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, dude, they're, they're fun. That's just, it's fun music. You know, so sometimes musicians just take themselves way too seriously. Steam Power Draft is just fun. I think that's one of the best ways to describe it. There's another gal, um, Regina Spector, and she, she's more kind of pop oriented. But again, her music is just really, really fun. And, uh, there's also a band out of Everett that I met at a, a backyard picnic. Uh, my friend Stephanie invited us over, and her neighbors were this band. They're called Vaudeville Etiquette, which is just a killer band name. And they gave me a copy of their CD. It's called Debbie Taunts and Dealers. And it has absolutely become one of my favorite CDs. It is just so, there's a song called Clara Bow on it. And 
the, the imagery they create with their lyrics is just so good. It's they're they're talking about um, how how men have lost the chivalry that you used to see on the silver screen, and uh, I, I forget, it's, it's basically kind of a back and forth between a guy, guy and a gal, and then saying, "I you know I saw the ghost of Clara Bow." Um, I mean, check, check out vaudeville etiquette. They're just, they're very worth checking out. Great stuff. And, uh, and yeah, so you know Regina Spector. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, she, she is, again, just, it's fun music. It's really fun. Okay, time for my magic reverse stitch. Old school style, which I don't think I really need. I think I got that one locked in pretty well, but we'll give it a we'll give it a few here. I think that's it for tonight, because it is French toast time for Randy. So let me pull this out of here. Back half of a pair of jeans. So, Amrita, it was nice catching up with you. Great to see you in chat. And if yeah, if, if it's uh, reasonable, you know, check out my show tomorrow night. I start at 8 o'clock uh, p.m. here in the Pacific time zone. And I do that every Friday. And it's just, they're, they're fun. I, I haven't decided which album I'm going to play tomorrow, but it will be one of them. One of them I've got lights set up for. And... Uh, yeah, we'll just see where that goes. So, ah, yeah, so, so, some of the Viking metal is also really fun. I, I've, I've got a few Viking metal albums. They're 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 pretty kicking. So, uh, and Renee, if you're still here, of course, always good to see you. Best daughter in the world, and favorite of all my children, all of my one children. So, thanks to anyone who's watching and who has watched or will watch. So, thanks so much. French toast time for Randy. 